Today we'll be covering an amazing story of animal friendship that went so viral in the Roman Empire that it nearly destroyed a town. In the past, humans were more connected to their environment and often ran into our buddies from the wild. One of the most famous animals in the ancient world was the dolphin, which was, according to ancient myth, created by Dionysius after he turned a crew of pirates into dolphins out of pity. Thus dolphins were the most human of animals, indicated by their very name dolphin or delphinus in Latin, which is derived from the Greek word adelphos, which simply means brother. The Romans loved these creatures, and books are filled with anecdotes about them. One story tells of dolphins helping a town of fishermen to get larger catches. One tells of a dolphin who, having befriended a young man, gave him regular rides to school in a neighboring town and back. Our story today would surpass them all and became one of the prime attractions of the Roman world. In the Roman province of Africa, there was a small fishing town called Hippo Diaridis, today known as Bizert. Being reasonably isolated, the town's activities were almost entirely focused around the sea. Fishing, boating, and swimming were all the recreation that could be found. The bored young men of the town, as young men are wont to do, created their own game, a swimming contest. The one who could swim out furthest into the ocean before he returned was hailed as the leader of these young men, and seen as a winner until someone else took his place. One day, one of these young men swam out further than anyone else dared. He swam until he was forced to consider the prospect that he very well may not be able to return. Just then though, a curious dolphin swam up in front of him. It butted playfully at him, as dolphins do, before swimming under him, catching him on its back and dashing out to sea with him, before eventually swimming back to shore, returning him to his friends in town. The news of this wonderful occurrence spread like wildfire, and the boy became an instant local celebrity as people begged him to tell the story again and again. The next day, the boys went back to the sea, followed by a huge number of curious onlookers. The boys went out swimming, but the young hero in question, still traumatized by a lurking dread of the infinite ocean, remained close to shore. To the delight of the onlookers, however, the dolphin appeared in the distance, leaping playfully out of the water, as if inviting its new friends along for the ride. This happened regularly, where the boys would swim, the dolphin would play, but the boys were too afraid to meet him out in the deep. After a couple weeks, the boys, either by their own encouragements or by those of the rest of the town, decided that they, young men who were born and bred to be close to the sea, had no business being afraid. So they, led by their young hero, swam out to meet the dolphin, which was absolutely delighted by the company. They played with him all day, the dolphin even coming close to shore to cavort with the group. They quickly befriended the animal, giving it a name, Simo. Only the one boy was allowed on its back, but they swam as a group together, growing quite close over the course of the summer. The dolphin even occasionally brought a companion, though they were always too shy of humanity to allow anyone to touch them. Simo, however, was as bold as the boy who had befriended him. He would regularly roll up onto the sandy beaches, basking in the sun with the boys, until when he decided he wanted to head back to sea, he would roll himself back into the waves. This of course stirred great delight in the town of Hippo. The friendly dolphin was seen as a sign of favor from Neptune himself, and the creature was much beloved. A proconsular legate, Octavius Avidus, one of the highest ranked officials in the province, heard about this development and was amazed. He hurried down to the town, and seeing the dolphin sunning itself with the boys, decided an appropriate offering must be made to the god of the sea. The legate brought expensive perfumes and oils with him, promptly dumping them onto the dolphin with a prayer to the god. The dolphin, not particularly pleased at this development, fled into the sea, and wasn't seen for some time. When it finally returned, it was noticeably gaunt, as if it was ill, and it was quite some time before it made human contact again. It did though, and resumed its playful antics with its group of friends. Wealthy Romans from near and far, hearing stories not simply of an exotic creature, but an exotic creature acting exotically, flocked to the town. Such tourism came as an absolute shock to the local economy, 
which was completely unprepared to house all of the wealthy, demanding delegations, but was also unable to provide the amenities which they desired. As people continued streaming to the town to see the dolphin, the streets quickly became overcrowded. The town became louder and far more raucous. Prices for the simplest of things skyrocketed, and the original residents of the town grew more uncomfortable and more miserable. Eventually, as the town was bankrupted by the tourism, only one solution presented itself, the source of this strife, the dolphin named Simo. He must be destroyed. And so the dolphin was killed under cover of night. This tragic end serves as a lesson that tourism, then as now, was a double-edged sword. If a place was well prepared for wealthy tourists like Bay or Puteoli, surrounded by villas and full of amenities and a regular stream of luxury goods, these wealthy patrons were an enormous factor in the survival of the city in question. For Hippodiritis, however, tourism was nearly the cause of its utter destruction. If you'd like to hear more about daily life in the past, definitely watch the rest of our series or check out our friends over at Ancient History Magazine who produce phenomenal content. And finally, a huge thanks is owed to our supporters on Patreon and to many talented researchers, writers, and artists who made this video possible. Please consider contributing to fund future content. If you found this topic interesting, check out these related videos about our fascinating past. Be sure to like and subscribe for more history, and check out our description for ways to support the channel. Thanks for watching.